things you probably found reading drawing books and so forth is that more or less they're all working and helping you whether it's a coloring book or a book on drawing they're helping you find how to get to that outer edge and there's lots of ways to do that but one of the ways to do that and to start getting comfortable with it is to trace around something and one of the things that we love is our hands we love our hands and we really actually want to love our hands even more than we do and know them more than we do so one of the ways we can do this is by tracing now when I'm tracing the way I just trace this this hand that I just drew is going to look a little bigger than my hand because when I put the pencil down and have it right up against my finger very vertically notice it's very vertical here then it makes a line that's a little bigger than my hand now I'm going to go ahead and do a line um, and make it a little smaller than my hand and let's see let me do my hand again with it being very vertical and this time I think I'm going to do it on one of these awesome pieces of Canson tracing paper. Um, this is my favorite tracing paper because it's so uh, transparent. But what I want to show you are a couple of things because you might think like, okay, I'm going to trace my hand. That's pretty easy. I think I can do that. But in going towards drawing things that look real, we want to become more and more sensitive to what we're doing with our hands with um, not just tracing our hands, but the hand that is tracing the hand. Um, so I'm going to ask you again to get back on the end of a pencil. I think I'll probably bring this pencil in just to show you. This is a pencil that has wood around it. It's still a very soft pencil. It's a 9B pencil. And then there's also this other pencil that is a woodless pencil. And so it just has paint around it and then it's it's all what we call would call lead in the in the old days uh, but it's all graphite uh, in there so here's two different styles of pencils and um, sometimes you might want to use a pencil that doesn't draw as darkly as this one can because you want to start learning how to have your hand hold the pencil back from the tip of the pencil. So this is a way we hold a pencil when we're drawing. Um, to me it's almost like using chopsticks where one chopstick is, um, <laughs> get myself into trouble here, where one chopstick is stationary and then this chopstick moves. All right. So when I'm holding this, to me, if you use chopsticks, this is a whole lot, the way I'm drawing is a whole lot like actually almost either way I'm holding this pencil. So it could be that I'm holding it like this or with this one, that is the stationary one, it could be that I could even draw like that. But that feels kind of weird. So it's mostly like we would hold the one that gets to move with the chopsticks. So we've got that going and you may want to review because if you've been taught to write when you were little, you may be holding pencils like this and when you do that you can't really see what it is that you're drawing and you actually wouldn't even have enough of the pencil sticking out in order to do it so you don't want to get tripped up by some of the stuff that is kind of unconscious so we might write like this and we might grip like this writing a lot of people have that going or some version of that seen all sorts of it and it's a secure way to hold your pencil to write I don't know if it's even the best for writing but it doesn't really work very well for tracing or for being able to eventually see what you're drawing as you draw it without sticking your head all the way down on the paper and looking underneath what you're doing so it might seem like something that's not important but it's really important that we get back from it. So here's the right hand and, uh, and then here's uh, the left hand, how that would look. But again, just back on the end of it and not in a, in a tight grip like this, in a really relaxed grip. 
And one of the things that I often say to my students is, hey, I'm handing you a paintbrush. Hold your pencil like you would hold a paintbrush. You would not be trying to paint like this. You would want to be back from it. So this is, this is really important stuff. It may not be the most glamorous, but it's the first step to getting to where you can draw something that looks like something um, while with your hands and not just with your fingers and your fists and so forth, but actually using your a whole arm for it. So I'm going to go ahead here and um, actually do one more tracing uh, first. Um, I'm going to trace, use a right-handed grip. I'm left-handed, but I'm going to do a right-handed grip for people that are watching here that might might be uh, right-handed and I want to point out that this is attached to this and there is no place that the arm kind of stops abruptly and the hand starts. So we call this the wrist and in our minds we've got this idea that when we say we're going to trace our hand that we're going to stop right here. So we're going to make a difference in our whole setup and our whole way of approaching things by including the arm and we can even include the shirt. You know, I've got this shirt on and this is going to start helping us see how to draw something that is sticking in to something else. So this could be a head and this could be a neck and this could be the turtleneck or it could be uh, the cloth going around the shoulders and so forth. So we want to start seeing things everywhere just as easily as we can, as effortlessly as we can, but with as much awareness as we can. So I'm going to come into here and I'm going to use a very vertical tracing here. And I'm doing it a little bit darker this time, kind of hoping that you can see it even more than you could before. And I also can erase it back. So if, it, if you kind of got a heavier pencil hold right now, that's okay. We can be pushing. Now look, you're not going to just fly around it. You want to feel the knuckles go out, feel these wrinkles that I've got here. A lot of you aren't going to have wrinkles and some of you might have even more. Going to kind of make a place for the, you know, nail too. And I'm probably back here where you can't see as much now. You do not want to undercut the arm, especially because you'll end up with this little tiny stick of an arm. Okay? So again, this is going to be a little bit bigger hand than my hand is. Now that you can see this dark underneath it, I want to show you what it would look like if I undercut my arm that goes up to my wrist. All right, I'm just going to place it right here again and line that up. And this is, this is really something that you want to kind of master, not because it's so critical, but because it breeds awareness. So if I go underneath here and I'm on a slant like this, now, you know, when you're being creative and you decide I want little skinny fingers, this is the way to do this. You know, you see how I'm kind of pushing it underneath here and letting it go underneath my fingers, you know, and a lot of times people do this unconsciously. And I'm also going a little faster than I went last time. And so I'm going to encourage you to go sl more slowly, but I want to show you kind of quickly how this can end up not looking right. So this gives you a chance to see if I undercut it, this is what I have for my, let me flip this here, for my hand. And probably unless you're wanting to do something that looks like it might be close to death, you don't want to undercut it when you want it to look like a hand. So now I'm going to use this left hand that I traced with my right hand using this grip and we're going to do some sort of boring stuff here. I had talked to you about being able to have less darkness for this outline and so one of the things you can do that might seem really weird to you is you can erase it. Now I don't think I'm going to erase all of it because I want you to still be able to see a lot of it and this is kind of cool because you'll see that if you can see these two you can also see these two better and one of the things to start to learn 
in starting to do observational drawing, meaning that you're going to draw something that looks like something, is to be able to start with, if you have any outlines like we do here, to have them be very light. So you have choice about where you want to make it light and where you want to make it dark. And I'll just show you right here that um, if I wanted to, uh, you know, fill this in, you know, shade this in, um, or the way I also might do it, I'm starting to do this. Now all these skills, when you bring this and you're having yourself just come right to that line, that's a good skill to start to learn. Um, you don't have to always hit it right to the line because I'm going to show you this too, because we have, we can just go right past it, just right past that line, and then we can bring our kneaded eraser in, K-N-E-A-D-E-D, -E -D. it's what you need, the eraser that um, I think that we all need, uh, but it gets cleaned when you need it. So uh, let me go on this side just to make sure you can really see this. And let me just go right over the top of this. And this is not really the way I uh, develop tonal value. You know, this is, this is a tonal value. White is a tonal value. <clears throat> I call the paper, when it's white, a zero value. It has zero on it. And then when we start drawing really, really lightly, let's see if I can draw really, really lightly with this darker, this is on 6B, I betcha. Oh, it's a 4B. Now what does all that B stuff mean? You go to the art store. These, this pack goes from 4B to 4H, and you're like, I don't know what that is. What is it? Well, I simply think of the H as being hard. They're lighter um, because those pencils are harder. So when, it's, um, when it says H, you're getting into really light graphite and then light tonal values made easily with that if you don't press too hard, which we should never press too hard. Um, and then this has a B on it, and I think of soft butter for the B, and so these are softer pencils, and as the number goes up on them, they get uh, darker, because the, when they get softer, they get darker. And sometimes they even kind of change their hue, like this, this 4B erases down really nicely, and it um, goes down it, and looks very silver to me, where sometimes the softer pencils, the B pencils with higher numbers, tend to almost change texture. But it's always changing in the industry, so you have to see what yours would do. So here I'll just quickly swipe this. This thing can be made into like a point, if you wanted to come in here and just be with like a point where I'm going to come in here and just almost like I'm drawing, just pull this out like that. But easier with this, you may have noticed me doing it before because I just do it automatically, is I tend to make kind of like a knife kind of thing, come in here and then just pull, pull that along the edge of it, um, just going across it a few times. So this is how we're starting to get the tonal value in here. Now with this one, it looks um, like I kind of came in kind of tight here when I erased the outside and I also erased this line back a little bit. See how I, I teased it back and I could pull it back further if I wanted to and then I could come in here and do some scribbling, some micro scribbling. So here I am <clears throat> micro scribbling. <clears throat> and that's how I work work a finger. You're going to see here that with a micro scribbling and without like coming in and um, doing this, these fingernails, like sometimes because we're thinking and not so much in a drawing way, we're thinking more in a thinking way. You know, people will come in here and do these fingernails like this. It's not wrong. It, you know, we can do it any way we want. This one is going to be on the edge like this, but again, we're going to get ourselves into trouble if we come, I mean, that one looks pretty good, but um, we're going to get ourselves into trouble if we start drawing in a more realistic way and we get things going that are just too dark that will stick out in a way we don't want them to stick out later. 
So this is why I'm showing you how you can change your lines and draw really lightly. You can also, when your lines are this, this light, you can go over them like I'm doing right here and you could even change what's called their line quality. You know, that doesn't mean if they're a good line or a bad line, like quality, like it's better or worse. It means what kind of qualities, kind of like we might say this person is kind or this person is, is nice. They have a quality of being nice. And these are these little lines here and you see me just teasing these in. But overall, let me show you something here that's going to be fun for you. Um, one of the things I make sure I tell my students, because it's really fun, you, you know, you outline this and then they usually go over the lines and, you know, draw in the fingernails like this and so forth. Um, but what we really want to be able to do is to start practicing shading, practicing making shading. So you can use a pencil that's a very much lighter pencil than what I'm using. I'm having to do what I call hold my pencil off the paper. So you can really practice just doing very light scribbling and I have this hand and I can move this hand, like I can move this finger right over, <laughs> it's kind of funny, right over to here and I can actually look at, now this is going to be a problem for me because I've got, I can look at the finger very close to, very near to see how this kind of turns to the side here. It's not like some oval in the middle of it. In fact, my fingernails are long enough that they go past there. Now, I was able to trace this with my right hand, but because I'm left-handed, um, it's going to be hard for me to do it. My left hand isn't very, it isn't as coordinated as my right hand. I mean, my right left hand is more coordinated than my left hand, but you see me coming in here this way, and then I would see now that my nail is going to come out here. It's going to come out farther. I want to kind of make it a little darker than I normally would, and then it's going to come back in here, you know. Now, whether or not I want to be so realistic that we can see that my nail's grown out a little bit since the last time I went into the nail shop. Uh, that's up to you. <laughs> How much uh, detail you give to stuff. That's one of the things about drawing is that it's very much up to you. Like when you draw a portrait or something like that, which you will, you keep working this kind of stuff and you'll be able to do a portrait, you'll be able to do a tree, you'll be able to draw a dog, you'll be able to draw a landscape and so forth. So now this nail's kind of small here. Now why is that? Well, it's because the finger is actually kind of big because remember I traced around and didn't come back in underneath it on this one. So I just go ahead and make this nail a little bit bigger. Now I am still drawing with my right hand. Let's remember that I'm somewhat ambidextrous, but I'm also very left-handed when it comes to precision with drawing. But maybe together we'll train my right hand just like we're going to be training your right hand. Most likely you're right-handed, but you could be left-handed. Okay, so there's the nail, and then, then I start noticing how this kind of turns into, how the end of my finger turns in around here. And so I'm just basically using the outline to know where I'm going to be, but I'm pretty much scribbling till I see it. Maybe you've seen the video, the Draw Here Now video, that's scribble till you see it. And using this outline and using a very light outline so I can come here in here and scribble it gives me a chance to uh, put it down you know put some down I can always come back in here um, this is a big feature of this video here is how to shave back how to erase back and shave back what you're doing I don't even like the direction of this as much as I might so because everything's being touched on the paper so lightly, it's a darker pencil, it's a 4B, this is a woodless 4B, it's a darker pencil, but see if I just bring that nail out here a little bit, and then I'm leaving a shine on it, a shadow, a, a highlight, as they would say, and I can erase back and get more of a highlight, and then I can sneak my pencil back onto there. And if I think this is too dark or too big here, I can just come in here and get it. And this is 
This being ambidextrous is something that's easy for me to work with both hands at once. Now here, where we have these knuckles and so forth, you really want to look at these things. Sometimes you wanna just draw on your knuckles. Just go ahead and draw right on it and because I'm pointing to it. Now, if you didn't wanna get any of this on this, you could use a toothpick or something, but you just wanna see what's happening here and not see this just as like line, line, line. You wanna see that these lines are like waves and they're actually wrinkles. So they actually start one place, come up and go down. Now, if you're really young, your lines might look more like these do at the end here. They don't have as much dimension to them here. And so you're not just looking for things that you can identify and then putting them in, you know, like, I got that. You wanna look at how it really, really is. And so it's a little darker right here, a little lighter right there. And that's where I just tease it right into it. Now, if I were doing this back again with my right hand, I can pull this in really close here. And if I can get over the top of it, which I don't think is gonna be good for you viewing it, I can just um, see where this is. And I could have it over here. This is not too far to look. This is still within your sight of vision your range here, just sort of teasing these in. And it's, it is looking at them for how they really, really are. By doing them with this method of lightly teasing them in, they're gonna still feel like they are part of the finger rather than some line. Like if this were gonna be drawn like this, like it gets drawn initially sometimes, granted that's a little, a little rough, <laughs> but sometimes it's that, and you know this kind of thing that's going to disturb it's not wrong because there's nothing wrong here there nothing's wrong it's going to disturb the feeling of this learning how to draw realistically so um so you want to just really tease these in now additionally just like we did here and look how nice this can be if we get in here with this or with a paper towel or with a stump, which is like a rolled up, rolled up piece of paper. You can buy these things that are called stumps. Then we can get rid of all that lininess and we could get rid of that here too. And we could get rid of this being so much like that and this being <laughs> so much like this. So if you do do this, look how easy it is to get rid of it, sort of. It's also look at how hard it is to get rid of it when you press too hard. But you still could come back in here because right now you have the contrast of this line, which is fairly dark right now, and it's up against the white paper. But one of the things that I tell everybody is that nobody's white, even albinos. They're going to be some kind of light pink. Um, nobody's white. Everybody's beige. Everybody's on the scale of beige to brown to let, <laughs> this in size of the paper here. I got in there too tight. Everybody's a light beige to a beige to a brown. And all of our skin tones can be more towards the red side, more towards the yellow side. Uh, sometimes even more towards the green side, blue, it, and so forth. So you want to fill this whole thing in. You know, this idea that we just make a line and then we have a hand. This is one of the reasons I'm always teaching this is this is an early win for my observational drawing classes. And I could go in here, see, again, you see how that white line is there? That's because the paper, I dug into the paper when I did it. But even this doesn't look bad. You know, here's, here's what you want to do is get this, get this tone in here on everything. And what are you doing while you're doing this? You are practicing, practicing drawing. Now see how that line just sticks out there and maybe you like it, that's okay. Because later you might add in a line a little bit more. I'm trying to get my students to learn how to see tonal value as an edge. So I, and I also am getting them to try to learn how to or start to really learn how to make lines and let the lines have this different line quality like I'm talking about, getting a little bit wider, thinner, so forth. So they also carry this information of form. They carry this feeling and this visual 
that it's form. And the reason I like to scribble till you see it, see how I'm scribbling this and I'm, I'm not trying to really like make it look like it's dimensional. It just starts to look like it's dimensional when I draw on it as if I'm drawing actually right on the finger. I just feel that. So I don't want a line to, see how I'm gonna get rid of this line by attaching a darker value to it. I don't really want the lines to carry the show. We are in line recovery. <laughs> Too much outline, we're in line recovery. Um, because of all our books that are printed using line and so forth to show us illustrations, we just um, end up with uh, the thought that everything has to have a dark line on it. It's okay to have a dark line. You know, when I start this, the students start thinking, oh, she hates lines and we can never have lines and everything. But the line cannot be the solution. It's like when you're changing your diet, you know, and mm, man, you love those hamburgers. Oh, you love them. And maybe there's, there's nothing really wrong with a hamburger, but maybe, maybe too many of them. So you're wanting to switch over to something. Anytime you're wanting to switch over, make a new habit, sometimes you have to do what I'm doing here, which is really become aware of where the habit gets in your way. And if you like things darker, this line won't be too dark because maybe there'll be a shadow on one side of the finger and you can go ahead and not keep going up and down that line. We also have a tendency to be like, okay, I'm up and down the line. Make the line continue into the finger. Just continue into the finger, into the finger, into the finger. So we wanna get out of our extreme reliance on outlines and then not knowing, I call it, what's in the middle of the panda bear. You know, what is in the middle of the panda bear? The white of the panda bear's tummy is showing too much. You know, we have this dark outline and then we don't have anything in here. So because we're not white, we want to go to, from a zero value, which is what I call the paper, to at least a one value, a tonal value of one at least. Now you can leave a zero in places that you're going to have this kind of um, place where the skin comes forward and catches the light. So you're going to have some illumination in areas that are facing the light. And this is how we're going to start learning about illumination. Isn't that fun? So beautiful. So this gives you a lot of the, you know, how to, how to, how not to, how to, if you do too much of something, <laughs> how to get out of it. And all of this is appearing courtesy of two rather soft, they're both B pencils. Um, they have a lot of range. 4B has to be one of my favorite pencils in the world just because it's so versatile once you learn how to lightly hold your pencil. And again, you know, drawing's been tough for a lot of people because it hasn't been taught. So the idea that we're gonna grip it and we're gonna get it right, we're gonna get down there and get our head in there and our eyes down here and all this kind of stuff, <sighs> we gotta relax and we gotta hold our pencil back and let just the weight of the pencil scribble on the paper. And we can always go over it and over it and over it, each time building it better and better and looking more and more at what it is that we're drawing. So I suggest that we're drawing here from life, not off our little screen of a hand on our phone, but we're actually looking at what we're doing and comparing it and getting more and more feel for what is going on in our hand, for what's, what's in our hand. When you get down here, you're gonna see that this thing comes out, this arm <laughs> comes out of this shirt and that this part of this comes back around here and maybe this line was the back of the shirt and this is going to actually be the shirt's going to come around like this and then you're going to have to look at your shirt because you can't trace it as it is on your arm and it's gonna come around like this, and then here you weren't able to draw your arm because you couldn't trace it going into the shirt. Now this is gonna be really important. I looked at this, and this line needs to continue as if it's continuing on becoming a bigger arm. This a bigger arm, not too big of an arm. And now my 
arm is fitting into my shirt. And this is going to be darker in here. And even in here, I'm going to scribble till I see it. And then I may smush it. And if I don't want it to be smudgy, any place I don't want it to be smudgy, I'm just going to pull this out, pull this around, come in like this, and be here. Now, you don't want to finish something off too fast. And I probably made this, oh, again, I trace this with a heavy hand. so. I am wearing a black shirt, so the, what they call the local value, meaning it, what the shirt had, how the shirt was, the color of the shirt, that would be the local color, the tonal value of the shirt, that would be the tone the shirt is. So you're going to have this, you're going to have some types of a shadow more in here, and so when you come into here, you're going to look, 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 and play around, just like you did up here, for your hands, and you're going to draw the whole thing, including here's black, but here's lighter black, grayer, where the folds are. You can see that. So you start watching, just like we did on our knuckles, we start watching where these folds are, how they behave in the light, how they get darker someplace and lighter some other place. So you just use what you can see, and you do not sweat it, and you have patience, and this will give you a hand that is connected to a wrist, that's connected to an arm, that if you have a shirt on, you can make the shirt go around the arm. If you have a ring on, you can make a ring. Again, it has to, it can't go straight. It's got to kind of curve with, this, with the, the finger. So make sure if you get rings on your fingers, you get some curve to them. Don't make them totally straight across or they're gonna they're going to start telling a different story, a story of this flat paper not actually having a real hand on it. And so this is what we love. We love making images that start to look real, and we can start getting our successes just practicing like this.